So I was asked a question on Instagram about overcoming isometrics. The question was basically how much value do I place on them and who should be doing them? What time of the year or season should they be done and how long should a rep last? So here are some of my thoughts. And to be totally honest, I really don't see much value in overcoming isometrics for most people and I could even be swayed into not seeing much value in them for anyone. Lower level or less experienced lifters and athletes are just better off actually moving some weight. Higher level athletes can potentially see some benefits from them just due to their greater neural drive and neural efficiency and they can stimulate their neuromuscular system with overcoming isometrics at a lower cost in terms of fatigue and recovery. And because they do create less fatigue than just your regular lifting, they would fit well within an in-season training program. I do have some overcoming isometrics in my Launch 1.0 program and they're mainly in there to potentiate subsequent jumping exercises. And these can work well as a potentiation strategy for both experienced and non-experienced athletes. So I think they can serve a purpose in that context. But one of the issues I have with overcoming isos as a consistent method of training is what is the task? And how do you really know if you're successful in accomplishing the task? Unless you're standing on a force plate, you aren't getting any feedback. So you really don't know if you have improved from the previous time doing them. And this probably lowers motivation and intent of the exercise for a lot of people, even if they don't realize it. Now, my opinion on duration of a rep. Most of the research out there is going to suggest five to six seconds is optimal if you're trying to achieve peak force and rate of force development. Zatsiorski also recommends five to six seconds in his book. I actually think five to six seconds is too long. I think performing reps like clusters is more effective. Do two to three reps of about two to three seconds with short five to six seconds of rest in between each rep. Doing the shorter bouts is much more conducive to exerting maximal effort for the entire duration of the rep. Five to six seconds is actually a really long time to push or pull into the pins with a max effort. And the last thing I want to add is the idea of performing overcoming isos at specific joint angles. You can probably make an argument in favor of doing overcoming isos at the weakest portion of the strength curve, but I think the benefits would be negligible, and you can do them at various joint angles and yield nearly the same results. I think of strength training as a means to produce outputs. Strength training is meant to get you generally strong. These strategies of so-called specific joint angles probably aren't going to lead to much of a significant improvement in performance, especially if you're already participating in your sport consistently. And on a another note, an adaptation requires a potent stimulus to be experienced by the organism, and I don't think overcoming isos provide a potent stimulus, even when done at specific joint angles or so-called weak points of the body. So if you do like them and find some value in them, do them. Overall, I don't see much value in them besides for a potentiation effect, and training is really about the long term, not the short term.